Hey guys, All In Crypto here and welcome back ladies and gentlemen for another YouTube video. This is going to be your daily cryptocurrency market update and we're going to do something a little bit different in this video. You know, I really am a blockchain enthusiast. I'm a believer in the technology um, and I think that, you know, we, we, ultimately how I make my living is through investing and trading. Um, but regardless of that, I really do have a interest in blockchain, in the kind of ideologies of it, the technology behind it. Um, and I'm a complete advocate for it. You know, it's why we started this channel to really educate people about it. And honestly, I think that the crypto industry is going to offer and is currently right now offering um, life changing potential in regards to your financial status it's done it for me i haven't been here that long really you know i was the class of uh, 2017 uh, but of course i looked into uh, bitcoin when the silk road days were about years and years ago um but what i want to do in this video is talk about some things going on right now in the world and actually things that are probably very counterintuitive to me wanting to grow on platforms like twitter um and <clears throat> potentially um you know the one we're on because i really believe that blockchain offers a lifeboat to the nightmare where i think we're heading globally in regards to um restraints that are being put on and becoming more and more of commonplace in our daily lives. You know, we are having our um, liberty, our sovereignty um, tested and taken from us at more and more of an alarming rate. Uh, and that's really all I want to say on that. You know, I, I, I think that, you know, we're moving into a very much George Orwellian world. Um, it's amazing, isn't it, how many of these previous writers, and it's not just George Orwell, there has been many of them, have spoken about things that have come to pass and that are actually accelerating. And how did they know that this was going to be the situation? Well, a lot of the times the answers in history, you know, you can see how things have played out historically. Um, we do that as you know, fiat speculators, as market participants, you know, we often look at the sort of um, system that we currently have. And it's quite easy, I think, when you understand history to envision how that comes to an end. Um, but I want to do a few things in this video. So with all that said, and that kind of rant out of the way, I've got a couple of clips that I want to play. Uh, and the first one is um, the same lady who helped Trudeau freeze Canadians bank accounts just said we'd like to unlock the savings of people's personal accounts for the something recovery. She even referred to private savings as preloaded stimulus. Now, I'm a big believer in private property. I think if you've earned for something, even if it is the Ponzi fiat system that they've completely controlled your life with and enslaved you as a result of with, that you should at least be able to have say over what you do and don't spend that on. Uh, and I think that that it is very broad. You know, I'm a libertarian. I think that human beings generally should be able to do what they want. That's why we have free will, providing it doesn't infringe on anybody else's right to do that. Um, and that's where I think there's a need for governments and stuff like that. But anyway, um, just to kick things off with Bitcoin, because ultimately we give these daily cryptocurrency market updates to help you guys navigate the cryptocurrency markets. And we actually think that the headlines and the news and the narrative doesn't match actually what's going on on the charts. I have a very po positive outlook for 2023, which sounds mental on uh, if you relate it to the headlines, because we've got banking crisis, we've got this taking place, we've got that taking place. Now, that doesn't mean say we're permanently bullish on the crypto space because we believe in it. We understand that there's a disconnect between markets and fundamentals. It's always been the case. If you go and look at Jeff Bezos talk about Amazon and how the stock was going down and, you know, from 100 or whatever it was to seven or six, he said the weird thing was actually fundamentally the business was just doing the opposite of what the stock price was doing. You know, it was getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And that's what you've got, I believe, with crypto. Crypto is a technological revolution. Markets are impacted by a whole um, um, basket of external factors, which we looked at in 2022. And that's why we got out of the market, because we said things don't look so great. I think those conditions that didn't look so great are now improving. 
We are now, in my opinion, looking at sideways rates. I think that could be here. And I think if you get sideways rates, go and look at what the S&P has done under sideways rates after a hiking regime the past three times. And these things don't happen in this kind of a manner that often. So we're talking 20 years of history. Um, you typically, the S&P typically goes on to put in a new high. I can see that being on the table. I think there's a number of macro reasons why we think this. We look a lot at the two-year yields in relation to markets. And actually, if you look at the broad economic picture, it isn't hunky-dory, but it's definitely not as bad as people make it out to be. And that sounds insane. Certainly, you know, as somebody that's done all the looking into exactly what issues interest rates cause and so on and so forth. But broadly, if you look at where we're at right now, it doesn't look actually as bad as people make it out to be. And that sounds crazy. Um, but hey, ho, I understand that the stock market is overvalued, but it's overvalued against a infinitely overvalued um, fiat currency system. And we ultimately think if you look at the charts, you know, if you if you listen to the kind of doom and gloom, for example, gold, which is a speculative asset is at all time highs, uh, and is looking to, in my opinion, break them. The S&P is doing a similar thing. You know, we looked at all this yesterday. You've got the NASDAQ, which is a higher beta, which is further down. Apple, pretty much at new all-time highs. And listen to what's being said right now, guys. You know, we ultimately have higher targets for Bitcoin. It's not going to get there overnight, but we do believe that it will get there. A 25K neckline retest was always on the cards. That seems to be playing out. Expect that until you see higher levels taken and then look for upside. But ultimately, you've got bear market that we've had and now we're coming up and we're coming into that point of, you know, this significant point for not just Bitcoin, but the stock market broadly. So we are bulls. We'll, we'll continue to cover it and do a lot more analysis on it. It is, of course, um, Sunday. So you are going to have the futures market opening. It's going to be interesting. Um, that doesn't look great, but it doesn't look too bad. I wouldn't trade either long or short here. I'd wait for more uh, confirmation to either side. Um, but we are long from an investment point of view and ultimately took that decision at the start of the year. Um, so that being said, you know, I still think altcoins and everything are at great prices. Me personally, I'm going to continue to buy crypto here um, as we have been doing since the start of the year, ultimately envisioning higher prices. You know, I think you're going to see a 40K plus Bitcoin this year. What I want to do now is talk a little bit about fundamentally, you know, that what's going on here where the world's at it always really amazes me that bitcoin it's almost like divine intervention that bitcoin came about you know really when the cracks were starting to show not for the masses but for the people who watch this sort of stuff um isn't it interesting that the the in one of the uh, blocks toshi incorporated uh, the headline from i think it was the telegraph saying uh, chancellor on the brink of second bailouts and this is the whole concept behind why bitcoin was created, you know, a peer to peer money system that can't be um, externally tampered with like the fiat systems that we have that are ultimately manipulated to control you. This was very interesting and telling in regards to we are moving towards a world where CBDCs are reality. If you go and look uh, at China, they're a lot further ahead, but you could almost see them being the blueprint, perhaps or a similar path to the one that we are going down. You know, if you look at their social credit score systems and, and, and things like this, we are advancing across the board. I pay attention to this very, very closely to CBDCs. And ultimately with those CBDCs, and it's why I believe there's been such a move to get away from cash, because they can't, you know, there's nothing more or not anonymous than a 20 pound note, right? With CBDCs, the government, the Fed will have all of your information, they'll be able to program it in a certain way. And actually, you may, we may move into a future and people say this is unbelievable, but go and look at what's happened over the past two years. Would you ever have envisioned that? You know, if somebody had told you that five years ago, you'd have gone, nah, no way. With CBDCs, they bring a lot of um, constraints to uh your kind of freedom and your and your choice to spend what you've earned however you want and even to, in regards to saving it so could you imagine um a world perhaps where if you've got over a certain amount of savings then you get you know a tax on that or something along those lines and this is kind of 
what the Canadian, I'm not sure what she is, um, she'll be somebody in the government, is talking about here. Uh, and I want to play this clip because this is fundamentally what blockchain is challenging. Bitcoin opened, even though I might not be a Bitcoin maxi, I'm an appreciator, appreciator of it because it opened up Pandora's box in regards to um, questions that are now being asked. Start right there with this notion of the spending because you allude to it in your fiscal update. The language seems to me to be important. Uh, you, you know, smart, uh, targeted. These are words that suggest you want to make very careful, kind of incisive spending on the government's part to get the economy going. What might that look like? Can you give us any detail? Um, well, it's great to be with you, Amanda. And I want to thank you, first of all, for really zeroing in on the preloaded stimulus idea. None of us have a crystal ball, um, but economists uh, like Ben, like Doug, have been pointing out that some Canadian households, and it tends to be the better off households, do have quite a lot of money that they've saved because there hasn't been that much to do in the pandemic. And certainly it would be great if that money could go towards driving our recovery. And I wanna make an offer now to all of your listeners. If people have ideas on how the government can act to help unlock that preloaded stimulus, I am very, very interested. Maybe as Doug Porter was suggesting, it happens by itself. That's the best case scenario for me. But if people have ideas on how we can really, you know, try to unleash that and particularly unleash it in the parts of the Canadian economy that really need support, tourism, hospitality, domestic services, uh, let me know. How do you like the sound of that, guys? Your savings, your hard earned savings. And there will be people out there um, that will say, oh, well, these guys have got loads and loads of money. It's my belief that if you seek fairness over liberty, so what that means essentially is that you try and create a fair world in an unfair world. How you achieve that is by taking off of one person to give to someone else. Well, who's that fair for? You know, I don't think you, I think the closest form of fairness that you have is if you respect people's um, liberty and rights, you know, and if you, Personal savings is, and private property is, is one of them. Um, it might not be, um, you know, because people go after this idea of fairness by basically saying, well, we're going to take from this group of people and give to this group of people. Well, that's not fair on the people that you're taking from, is it? But it's fair, according to who, you know, it's, we're getting quite philosophical here, guys. But the reason I bring this up, Bitcoin, I, I think, does fix this. The problem you've got is the government's, uh, that you have in power will not allow it to fix this. And if you look at one of my first loves in regards to cryptocurrency was Monero. Um, I, I still love Monero. Um, I just don't necessarily speculate it from an invest. I don't see it as an investment for me. I see it more as, um, you know, something, some sort of a hedge. But if you, this is a reality I think we're going to move towards across the board. Um, and actually, Bitcoin does fix this. I just don't think the governments will allow it to be the fix. Um, and I think actually, you know, this is why we're seeing digital identities really be pushed to the forefront of things because blockchain's moving to a place where actually you'll have a, 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 a um, metadata that will be able to track your wallets and, and or get put an identity to your wallets, which will make things a lot easier for them to track. They're not going to allow it to be untrackable, guys. Otherwise, how are they going to keep a, 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 a regime on taxes and stuff like that? And also, I just want to point out with this clip, governments technically are servants to the people. It's a whole idea of a democracy. Well, how does that sound anything like a democracy when they're talking about ways that they can take savings from people? This is why I'm such a big fan of um, blockchain. You know, I really do believe in it. Um, I just think that, I, I'm a little bit suspicious with how it came about because it almost seems too good to be true, doesn't it? You know, you have an entire new monetary and operating system as the old one is on its last legs and has been, you know, the emperor's found out he's naked, um, essentially. This is another interesting clip, uh, and then I'll leave you guys. It was 1967. Buckminster uh, Fuller predicted Bitcoin and new wealth. 
Um, I'll talk about something that would uh, be one of the realizations by 2018, a realistic scientific accounting system of wealth, of what is wealth. Wealth is, uh, isn't the gold of pirates. Uh, wealth is energy. So wealth really is. I mean, if you think about money, it is kind of an ideology. Um, why is something valuable? Because people believe it to be that. But this, is, this was interesting because, honestly, and you've got Milton Friedman, you've got Frederick Hayek. These are all people that have speculated. They're more so on e-commerce um, and, and a kind of e-cash, if you will, that could be what Bitcoin is trying to be. But this is very interesting. I'll go ahead and play the clip. Because now I'll have to talk about something that, uh, that, which will be one of the very big uh, new realizations by 2000 AD, which will be a realistic scientific accounting system of what is wealth. We now know that wealth isn't the goal that the old pirates used to have. Wealth is energy, and we have an Einstein in the world in which the scientists found that when energy left any local system, energy was engine, it only did so by joining another system. It did not go out of the universe. But experiment after experiment, they found the energy never got lost. So they had to write an entirely new law of energy, called the Law of Conservation of Energy, which said, Energy can neither be created nor lost. So this suddenly we got a new clue to wealth. Wealth is not something that's going to deteriorate and, and, and get lost, which was a great, a great way of thinking uh, and, all the, and all the economics. Next thing I discovered, that wealth is, consists of something more than energy. It considers. So I find the phenomenon that every time we use it, we say, I make an experiment. Now, every time you make an experiment, you always learn more. You can't learn less. You may learn that what you thought was happening isn't happening. That's, that saves you a lot of your time, because we want to then increase the effectiveness of our time. So I then say that the intellectual factor in wealth is one which every time we use it always improves. We always learn more. I've discovered that the energy part can't run down, and the intellectual factor every time we use it improves. Therefore, wealth, I discover, is something that always increases. So that I would then point out to you that we are going to be able to afford to, to make everybody customers. And we're going to be able to afford then to bring in your Africa. And that this is, is the answer to your question. We talk the well, whole world, all the world, we're going to have to make all of humanity successful or none. It's very interesting because if you look at actually what uh, one of the big things that blockchain does, is it takes a, a world that, you know, might not have proper financial or global access to the financial uh, world, but, you know, they have connection to the internet. And this is where blockchain is going to onboard billions of, I don't think it'd be one, I think it will be billions and billions of people eventually. Um, but it is interesting. You know, it really has opened up Pandora's box. Of course, we know the Elon uh, and Twitter news in regards to who uh, he's appointed the CEO as. I think it was somebody from the WEF, who of course he's uh, supposed to be um, against, but hey ho. Um, so that's really where we're at, guys. Uh, this was a bit of a different video because I think these things are important to think about. And I think actually they're fundamental to why Bitcoin and crypto came about in the first place. Um, and it's just food for thought because I do think we are moving towards a world where you're having your uh, freedoms by your government more and more encroached upon. I mean, if you look at the sort of structure of everything right now, you know, look at just how much tax gets extracted from you um, and I'm not just talking about income tax you know all the various forms of tax you know th th there's so many um, I think already overreach from the government and I think it's only going to get worse and actually this video I think very clearly demonstrates that and, and this is fundamental to why Bitcoin crypto and everything is here so hopefully you guys have enjoyed this kind of a different style of video we have been covering the price Every single day, we're going to continue to do so. And we did it at the start of the video. Um, we're determined to, to try and get the, the the markets right. You know, ultimately, my money's where my mouth is on this. Um, and we're doing, and I'd like to bring a lot more videos in regards to certain projects that I'm looking into. I think there's some amazing things taking place without the block, with, throughout the blockchain um, space. And that innovation is only going to get better and create bigger opportunities on that note guys i'm going to love and leave you if you enjoyed the content like always appreciate those a comment and i'll catch you all in the next one thanks a lot for watching see you in the next